Hello everyone, this is Chandra Patiwada from Amazon Web Services. I am the Red Hat Specialist Solution Architect focusing primarily on the Babel for Aurora Postgres. In this session today, let's explore why Babel Fish for Aurora Postgres SQL and see what it brings to your business. The top key advantage of using the Babel Fish for Aurora Postgres SQL is that it accelerates the migrations from SQL Server to license-free managed database engines like Babel Fish for Aurora Postgres SQL so that you can get an instant cost benefit from licensing and log free from any proprietary based features that comes with the commercial databases. Apart from this, let's explore the top key features of Babel Fish among with others and see what it brings to your business. To start with, we will go through the, the storage architecture, read replicas, fast failover, auto backups, global databases, fast loans, and the other features. Let's uh, look at the storage architecture in the Aurora. Here in the Aurora, Aurora writes into six copies of data where two copies in each availability zone. And the quorum for the write is four and the quorum for reads are three. What that means is it technologizes the writes as and when it writes to at least four nodes. And it allows the reads as and when a minimum of three nodes are available. And the storage volume segmented in 10 GB protection groups and the storage scales by adding these 10 GB protection groups. And the storage volume grows or shrinks automatically by adding these protection groups and it can go up to 128 terabytes. This makes the Aurora more durable, scalable and highly available. Now let's look at the read replicas. In Aurora, writer and readers shares the same storage. This is the reason why creating readers won't take much time as all it needs is creating a compute instance and attaches to the same storage. And in Aurora, you can create up to 15 read replicas with load balancing and can configure auto scaling between these read replicas. This gives the scalability for your read workloads with auto scaling. And let's uh, look at the fast failover in Aurora. So here in Aurora, it's a, the failover is faster because it does a continuous recovery at the back end. If you look into the typical failover time in Aurora, it is less than 30 seconds. And it is less than 30 seconds for most of the workloads as it takes 3 to 10 seconds to recovery the database during the event of a failover. So this brings the fast failover in case of any disaster that happens. And the backups, here in Aurora, you don't need to schedule any backups because, because the Aurora does a continuous backup. And it takes the snapshots of this 10 GB segments and the logs parallelly and directly to the Amazon S3. And these backups won't cause any performance impact to your applications. And in the event of restoring to a brand new volume, the hundreds of storage nodes in the storage cluster can all access the Amazon S3 at the same time and apply the logs simultaneously, providing the fastest possible restore time. Let's see how you can achieve a cross-region DR using the global database. You can achieve cross-region DR using a global database with a single click of a button. The global database creates a copy of the storage at the secondary region with a continuous replication at the storage level with less than one second latency. You can also configure the RPO time limit using the global database to meet your DR compliance. And you can also create a reader instance at the secondary region for the applications which needs a low latency read transactions. In the case of any disaster at the primary region, you can fail over to the secondary region and point your applications back to the secondary region. This brings 
a cross region DR and provides low latency reads for the applications in the secondary region. Fast loans. Let's see how the fast loans works in Aurora. Let's say you have a database where the size is 10 terabytes or let's say 30 terabytes. And to take a copy of the database cluster, it only takes a couple of minutes. Let's see how this works. So here in this picture, here this is an Aurora cluster with a, with a writer and a reader attaches to your primary storage. Okay. And when you create a clone, the clone contains the virtual storage and the virtual storage contains the virtual pages, which points to the pages in the primary storage. So when you create a clone, the clone doesn't contains any physical data pages. So you won't be charged for the data as it doesn't contains any data pages. And all the reads will point to the actual databases in the primary storage. But for writes, since the clone should contain the copy of the data at the time when it is created, it copies only the pages which are modified after you create your clone to the clone storage. In this way, you can use the clones to give the copy of the production database to any downstream departments like the analytics, dev, testing or QA to test a new feature on a copy of the production database which brings agility to your business. Along with this, there are not many other features that includes the serverless, or scaling, auditing, monitoring, even notification, machine learning, and there are a lot of other features that comes with the Aurora. And to learn more about how to start with the Barrelfish, please reach out to us and we are happy to partner with you in your cloud journey. We also offer several courses which are available for free. And also look at our certification channel, which helps you to learn the rest of the services on AWS Cloud. Thank you so much, and we wish you a very happy cloud computing. Thank you.